Hi, my name is Julie Wainwright. I would say that my greatest strength is my ability to be able to work well as an individual or as a part of a team. I've been working for the last few years as a home health care nurse, so I spend a lot of time working by myself in the patient's home with just them. I've also had a lot of experience working as part of a team. I used to wait tables while I went to nursing school, and I worked for a short time in a nursing home as a big part of a team with other RNs, LPNs, and the CNAs. I respond to feedback as well as you can. You don't want to take what someone else tells you really and get upset about it. You want to try and understand that someone is trying to help you do a better job at your job or just, you know, they don't really, they don't want to necessarily tell you something to hurt your feelings. They just want to help you and maybe both them to be able to get the job done as, as well as you can. I've worked very well as a team player uh, quite a bit in the past. Um, as I said, I worked waiting tables while I was in nursing school to get my LPN license. I worked waiting tables for about four years. I worked overnights with a few other people that it was, you know, just us. We worked well together a couple of days a week. You really need to be able to work as a part of a team so that you can provide the customer with the best service that you can. You don't want to not help someone and then leave someone's food sitting in the window for a long time and then they get their food and it's cold. You just you want to be able to help each other because eventually you're going to need help and they're going to need help. So you just it makes for a better work environment when you can work better as a team. A time that I've dealt with conflict in the workplace was my first nursing case after graduating. I worked in a home care setting. Uh, one of the nurses that came to work with us, she had been working out of the country for a while. She had lived in India with her husband and kids. So she hadn't really been up to date with what exactly was going on. And we worked, when you work in a home care setting, you want to try and stay as best as you can doing what the what the parents like to try and keep their child on schedule and try and prevent any further problems such as you know triggering seizures that they didn't need and just making sure that everyone is all around working as a team and that you're providing the patient with the best care so when the nurse wasn't you know informing reporting off to the family or to one of us what exactly was going on with the patient or if they had had seizures that day. We wanted to make sure we all sat down, the other nurses, the parents, and this nurse to make sure that you know, she was informing everyone what was going on so that way we could keep everything running as smoothly as possible. A time that I made a positive change in my company was, again, that first case I worked right out of nursing school. I worked with a little girl. She had epilepsy. Um, before she ended up passing away, she was in, she had entered hospice care after much deliberation from the parents. And the parents, it was a good feeling to have the parents, they would ask me what I thought about you know, putting the patient in hospice or, you know, letting the patient just continue with the method and, the, you know, the course that we were on. So after a long discussion with the, with the parents and my supervisors, we decided that the patient needed hospice care. And then sometimes you have to, you know, assist with making difficult decisions. And eventually, one of the times I remember the the patient had been having all kinds of problems with seizures and stuff and hospice kept requiring and they would tell you to keep giving uh, the patient the medication to kind of put them put them out so they would they would sleep a little bit and I remember talking to the parents and telling them you know I'm not comfortable continuously giving this patient as much medication as hospice is 
is talking about, and the parents were glad that we at some point had stopped giving the medication that day for the patient, for, you know, their comfort and my, so everyone was, we were all on the same page and we wanted to see, you know, the co- patient as comfortable as possible, but we didn't want to give them, continuously give them uh, medications at levels that we just weren't comfortable with. My favorite project has been, I've been working in the last few years as a home care nurse, um, an LPN. I work with a little boy who has a feeding tube and he's fun because uh, we just, we've grown such a rapport, you know, we play together and yet we still, you know, make sure that he's getting all the care that he needs, but it's just, it's fun to work with the same people over and over every day, a couple days a week, and to be able to just, you know, um, hang out with them and, you know, see them progressively get better with the diagnosis that they have. (sighs) All right. In five years, I see myself, I'd like to go back to school I would like to obtain my bachelor's degree. Uh, Right now, I currently have an associate's degree from Brighton Stratton in medical reimbursement and coding, and I also obtained my CPC license, and I'd like to be able to just further my education and learn as much as I can about the medical field and how you can, you know... uh, make sure everything's being done as best as it can be and everything's documented. There's a lot of problems with healthcare and, you know, patients complaining about all kinds of different problems. We just want to make sure that everything's being done to the best of our abilities. And it's, it's such a good feeling to learn as much as possible. You know, I started where I work as an LPN and now I'm trying to change careers and work as a medical coder and it's just there's so much to learn that it's it's really exciting i've always been one that likes to learn as much as possible uh even further down the road about 10 years i after i obtained my bachelor's degree i would love to consider getting a job doing more surgical coding i've always loved being down in like surgical suites i remember being in nursing school during clinicals, we would get to go down to the operating room and check out the different surgeries going on. And ever since then, that was probably uh, five years ago, six years ago. I've absolutely loved it. It's all I've dreamed about. So I would love to get a chance to gain more uh, certifications and then try and see if I could get a job working in the like a surgical center doing some kind of coding that way. I, even if it's not like in the clinical aspect, which, you know, I would have the potential to do, I still would like to be around the surgery as much as possible, even if it is in a more clerical aspect.